going to talk about Compass Tea, and I'm going to cover why you may want to consider using Compass Tea, what is Compass Tea, how do you make Compass Tea, and how can you use Compass Tea on roses. So why should you consider using compost tea? Since I began gardening, I've heard about the value of compost tea, but I never really gave it much thought, as I never saw any data to support the value. But when I started dealing with professional nursery people and landscapers, I noticed that they were using compost tea. Some of these gardening professionals use compost tea as an alternative to chemical fertilizers, pesticides and fungicides. And some of these gardening professionals even had what they considered propriety and multiple special purpose compost tea recipes for specific plants and specific applications. I decided to do some further research on the value of compost tea. And I found that field studies have shown that there are benefits in adding compost tea to crops due to the simple fact that by adding compost tea, you're adding organic matter, increasing nutriment availability and encouraging increased microbial activity and that compost tea is more efficient than simply just using compost or commercial fertilizer in benefiting the health of your plants and soil, and that compost tea is also a soil organic matter builder, disease suppressant, and nutrient source. What is compost tea? I like the following simple definitions. Compost tea is a concentrated liquid fertilizer made from steeping biologically active compost in aerated water. It contains microorganisms that enhance plant health, suppress plant disease, provide plant nutrients, reduce fungicide and fertilizer requirements. Plus, it is nutritionally rich and can help provide plants with beneficial soil, bacteria and fungi. There are primarily two kinds of compost tea, bacterial, dominant compost tea, and fungal dominant compost tea. So what is the difference between bacterial versus fungal compost tea? A simple explanation for what is a complex system is that if you consider what happens in nature, when a piece of land is left fallow, it will begin to regenerate using annual plants. And then the plant species slowly change and progress into a more perennial plant species. This is a bacterial dominant soil environment. Eventually, this land will turn into a forest. Whereupon, over the course of this natural process of fallow land turning into a forest, the fungi in the soil will gradually become more dominant than the bacteria, resulting in a fungal dominant soil environment. It's important to understand this distinction as it determines what kind of compost tea is appropriate for a particular plant. Ideally, you try to match the right kind of compost tea with the type of plant you are growing. The bacterial dominant compost tea is best suited for annual plants, flowers, vegetables and grasses. The fungal dominant compost tea is best suited for perennial plants, woody plants, shrubs and trees. Making or brewing compost tea is a relatively simple process. I will share with you the process that I use to make a 5 gallon batch of compost tea. There are just 4 simple steps in making or brewing compost tea. But first you need to acquire the equipment needed to brew the compost tea. You will need a 5 gallon bucket, an aerator or air pump that ideally is capable of pumping at least 570 gallons per hour, an air bubbler. You can use an aquarium air stone or a custom made bubbler product. The air bubbler will need tubing to connect it to the aerator pump. You will also need a compost tea bag that will be used to hold the compost. The compost tea bag is a porous bag with at least a 400 micron mesh and it needs to be capable of holding two pounds of compost. The compost tea bag can be a paint strainer bag or a custom made compost tea bag. Now I will begin talking about the process of making or brewing the compost tea. As previously noted, there are just four simple process steps in brewing compost tea. In the first step, you select the compost tea recipe, bacterial, fungal or both, for the plant you intend to grow. Second, you place five gallons of dechlorinated water into a bucket and then mix the recipe's microbe, food and nutriment ingredients into the water. Third, 
You insert the bubbler connected to the air pump and the compost tea bag containing the compost into the bucket of water. Fourth, you turn on the air pump and bubble air through the water and the compost tea bag for between 12 and 24 hours. I will illustrate this process in more detail in the following slides. Let's now start with the first process step in brewing compost tea. As previously stated, the first thing that you have to do is to select the right kind of compost tea recipe for the plants that you intend to grow. For all compost tea recipes, there are basically three key ingredients. Water, compost, and a food source or nutriments for the microbes. The water must be dechlorinated or reverse osmosis water. Tap water typically has chlorine in the water. You do not want chlorine in the water, as it will kill the bacterial and fungal microbes in the compost tea. Chlorinated water can be used if it is filtered or by letting the water sit exposed to the air for about 24 hours or aerating it with a bubbler for about 90 minutes. The next key ingredient is compost. Try to use a good quality finished compost. There are pr primarily two kinds of compost. Bacterial compost, which is produced by mostly green materials and found in fresh compost piles, and fungal compost, which is produced by woody materials and may become more prevalent in the final stages of composting. The final key ingredient in making compost tea is the food and nutrient source for the microorganisms. The food source in combination with the type of compost used, be it bacterial or fungal, determines the type of microbes grown. For example, sugar sources like molasses encourage bacterial growth, and kelp or fish sources encourage fungal growth. Humic acids and other ingredients act as both a nutriment and a food source for the compost team's microbes. In this presentation, I'm going to offer three suggested compost tea recipes to make a five gallon batch of compost tea. These recipes will include a bacterial dominant compost tea, a fungal dominant compost tea, and an equal ratio of bacterial and fungal compost tea. Let's start first with a bacterial dominant compost tea. This recipe consists of five gallons of water, three to four tablespoons of liquid blackstrap molasses, four teaspoons of dry soluble kelp, or two teaspoons of liquid kelp, three to four teaspoons of fish emulsion, one and a half pounds of bacterial compost, and then you brew it for 12 to 18 hours at 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Next is a fungal dominant compost tea recipe. This recipe consists of five gallons of water, four to five teaspoons of fish hydrolysis, and you need to let the fish hydrolysis sit in the water for about 10 to 20 minutes to fully dissolve, and then three to four tablespoons of humic acid, two teaspoons of yucca extract, four teaspoons of dry soluble kelp, or two tablespoons of liquid kelp, two pounds of fungal compost, and again you brew it for 16 to 24 hours at 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, there's the equal ratio of fungal and bacterial compost tea. This recipe consists of five gallons of water, three to four tablespoons of humic acid, four teaspoons of trisoluble kelp, or two teaspoons of liquid kelp, three to four teaspoons of fish emulsion, one and a half pounds of mixed one-to-one -one ratio of bacterial and fungal compost, and then you brew it for 16 to 24 hours at 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in the second process step, we mix the recipe's ingredients with the water to make the compost tea. Pour five gallons of water into a bucket. Ideally, the water's temperature is between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Then mix into the water the recipe's ingredients. Do not yet add the compost, as this will be added in the next process step. Now the third process step. Insert the bubbler connected to the aerator pump and the compost tea bag containing the compost into the bucket of water that contains the pre-mixed recipe's ingredients. Try to place the compost tea bag and the bubbler in the center of the bucket to enable the bubbles produced by the aerator pump and the bubbler to bubble through the compost tea bag containing the compost. Now the fourth process step, will you now start the process of making or brewing the compost tea. 
Turn on the aerator pump and start brewing the compost tea by bubbling the air bubbles through the water and the compost tea bag for between 12 to 24 hours per the specific compost tea recipe. While brewing the compost tea, foaming may occur. Some ingredients, like molasses, will initially make foam, but this will go away. A few hours into the brewing, more foam may be present. This indicates a bacterial bloom has occurred. This is a good sign. The brewing compost should have a good earthy or sweet smell. If it smells rotten or putrid, it has gone bad and should be discarded. If the compost tea mixture has fish ingredients, it may smell fishy, but this smell will go away as the microbes ingest the fish. When brewing the compost tea, do not brew in the sun. Avoid brewing for more than 24 hours as the compost tea may develop organisms that will eat the good bacteria and fungi. Use the compost tea as soon as you brew it, as it will go bad. If it goes bad as indicated by a bad smell, do not use. How you use compost tea depends upon your particular gardening needs. The compost tea can be used at every watering or just weekly. Ideally, it should be applied early in the morning and or when the temperature is below 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be used undiluted or diluted. Compost tea can be used for soil preparation. It can be used as a soil drench by soaking the soil prior to planting or soaking the soil around the root zone of growing plants. It is suggested that you use one gallon of tea mixed in enough water to drench about 100 square foot of growing area or a gallon of compost tea mixed in 20 to 50 gallons of water. Compost tea can be used as a foliar feed by being sprayed on the plant's leaves. Make sure that you cover all the foliage on the plant. You can use a pump sprayer or a hose end sprayer. Be careful not to atomize the compost tea as this can damage the microbes. For some crops, foliar nutrition may be the most economical and reliable method of providing some nutrients, especially micronutrients. It is suggested that you dilute one gallon of compost tea to four to six gallons of water. Let's now talk about using compost tea on roses. For roses, use a fungal dominant compost tea. Drench the soil prior to planting. Soak bare root plants prior to planting in compost tea. You can fold your feed with no dilution. For maintenance feeding, drench the soil around a plant with one quarter to one half gallon of compost tea diluted one to one with water every one or two weeks just before and during the growing season. And consider spraying the rose beds with compost tea after any defoliation. Finally, let me summarize this presentation by highlighting some quotes and information from the reference materials. Compost tea will enhance plant health and it's more efficient than compost or commercial fertilizers. <laughs>